Yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m. at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command, and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Forces and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. Uh, hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May. But in the interest of saving lives, the ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded along all the fronts. The German war is therefore at an end. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. Today is victory in Europe day. This was the moment we'd all been waiting for. Enormous crowds had gathered outside the house and all over the centre of London to hear the end of the war in Europe officially announced by the Prime Minister. Advance Britannia! Long live the cause of freedom! God save the King! After the Premier had repeated his announcement to the House of Commons, the Speaker led a procession of members, headed by Mr Churchill and Mr Greenwood, across to St Margaret's for a victory thanksgiving service. <laughs> Meanwhile, of course, Londoners had begun their non-stop two-day celebration. The end of the German war had come 11 months after the landings in Normandy. B-Day came less than a year after D-Day. But it was the end of nearly six years of war in Europe. No wonder people went a bit crazy. And this was it in the West End. All over the capital, as indeed in towns and cities throughout the country, it was the same story. This was it in Lambeth Walk. When the Lamb of people are about, there'll only be one winner. That's the Lamb of people will fight anybody in the United Kingdom or outside the United Kingdom. Almost right up to the end, London and southern England had been under fire. London certainly had as much right as anywhere to celebrate victory, and London certainly did. Naturally, approaches to Buckingham Palace were almost continually jammed. Vast crowds outside the palace, cheering and waiting. the king and queen had answered call after call, so it was again at night. Thousands upon thousands went to the palace. It was at nine o'clock on VE Day that the king had broadcast his message to the people of Britain. Germany, the enemy who drove all Europe into war has been finally overcome. In the Far East, we have yet to deal with the Japanese, a determined and cruel foe. The Queen and I know that the ordeals which you have endured throughout the Commonwealth 
and empire. We are proud to have shared some of them with you. And we know also that we shall all face the future together in the hour of danger we humbly committed our cause into the hand of God. Everyone realized perfectly well that although the German war was over, the Japanese war was not. But for 48 hours at least, rejoicing was off the ration.